Hey guys, Harry here, back with another Brick Lane vlog. Uh, finally got some footage on this garage. Uh, this is just the, uh, other, the other half of the garage. I, I tend to build garages in two halves now. So I do one gable and then big rack back, about a nine or 10 uh, brick long rack back. And my ideal is trying to take a garage to ideally as close to 22 course as I can from the, uh, you know, from the ground and uh, but today because the way it was laid out i could only reach 18 course at one side and then i squared it around to 18 at the other um obviously i've been building a lot of garages recently a lot of walls uh, i've just been doing that for the last couple of years really a lot of walls and garages an odd an odd plot era there but to be quite honest as a one and one and like a, a solo brick layer as i am a couple of days a week it really lends itself well building walls and garages to earning a good, you know, to earning a good, uh, a good week's wage every week, and it's just manageable work. You know what I mean? There's, you know, you build a garage to 22 course, and if you build that, if you build it on your own, you'll have an easily a week's wage there. And a lot of the times, I can end up building a garage in, in, uh, in three days on my own, uh, if the gear's there and the mortar's right and everything like that. Um, I've been averaging probably a two and a quarter day on a on a garage to a scaffold. Uh, you know, if it's just a brick garage, this one in particular is a brick and a block. So I've done two and a quarter days to get the brickwork around to 18 course. And then it's going to take me a full day to get all the block work in. And that'll be two days solo and one and a quarter days uh, one and one. So... I know it, it, my dad, he tends to have fucking, he tends to have, have days off when I actually really need him, but, you know, I don't stress about it. It's just one of them things, if he, if, you know, if he's busy, he's got to do other stuff. Uh, you know, I just make it work and at the end of the day, I get as much done, sometimes if not more done when I'm on my own than I do when my dad's with me, because a lot of the time we, we work it, so he's loaded out and everything, and he's got in front on the days he's with me and that might mean that he's not jointing up as much or getting as much gobble for me if he's loading out but on the days he's not with me you know what i mean it pays dividends and everything's there so as you can see in this video i've got all my red bricks stacked up for the banding i know they're sort of on the wrong side at wall like but uh you know it was the only place that we could find to put them at the time since they're a bit tight with with the plant driving past right near the uh, near the garage and we had all the blocks in there they were there even before I turned up on site, so they were already there. And then we got all the halves stacked up there at the wrong side at wall as well. But uh, you know, we just uh, is what it is. If it's something where, if it's something like close, I'm not bothered. You know what I mean? Uh, there may be a time when my dad retires fully and don't work with me anymore, where I'll have a odd carrier, and I'll I'll have him fucking literally putting everything to hand all the time, and you know. I'll probably earn it. I'll probably get a little bit more done then when I'm not having to, you know, walk around as much grabbing gear and stuff like that. But um, a lot of the time, it's, it's a bit of a teething in period when you're when you're working with a brand new labourer, especially a young lad or someone who's never done uh, site work before. You're always having to keep an eye on them, make sure they're not fucking knocking your profiles, uh, stuff like that. And uh, I'm gonna have to bite the bullet one day and uh, and get a brand new uh, get a brand new labourer from scratch. That's gonna be probably pecking my head. But you know, hopefully I'll be a quite a few, quite a few years older, and I'll have a little, and I'll have a lot, a little bit more patience. Anyway, uh, but yeah, as you can see, uh, running into uh, two profiles here. I've got a profile set up at the front, which doesn't have a pillar in, just has a two brick return, which is very nice. And then I've got a profile at the back. I'm using just my aluminiums. I own four aluminiums, but I only really bring two to sites these days i don't see the point in having three a three profile set up as a, as a solo bricklayer or a one-on-one -on -one. um i just think it takes too much time to set that third profile up and it's not and uh especially with a lot of the work i'm doing it's not always beneficial when you uh especially uh, i could i could definitely see myself using the three profile in winter but especially in some way your gear's going off so quick Sometimes just better to build a little rack back. And uh, I sort of bought the six foot level as like a third profile. So my six foot Magnuson level I use all the time, which obviously I did the review on the Magnusons the other day. Um, that You know, I, I use that sometimes as a third profile to uh, hook the line onto and do like a three profile L setup on a garage or 
Uh, it definitely helps on double garages actually because the back of the garage is on is like a, the same length as the gable so um it's good to do a big l shape on a double garage full length of the back full length of the gable uh very a lot, you know quite ideal in winter to be honest i did that with my dad last winter and uh, he would just joint in the back and that's his like exclusive job when we're on garages on, on garages with two skins uh, that's his exclusive job, pointing it back at the garage, and I and he basically just passes me a good buckets of gobo and points. I t we know I tend to break off and load some bricks, and uh, you know it's a bit it's a big task jointing it back at the garage. That's why this one in particular is a lot easier uh, because on the first time first time I was I was I was building the garage, I, w I was forgetting that I could scrape the back of my bricks. Uh, obviously, I kept thinking it was a you know a single skin garage on the first side I did. But on this one, I've been plastering gob out back of my bricks. And then every, like, six courses, uh, four or five, six courses, so when I get to join, I uh, uh, I was just getting a, a stiff brush at back at wall and just giving it a fucking rub off. Uh, and gets all, gets all your snots into a bit of dust. And then I can brush that up uh, coming, you know, periodically through the day. Uh, there's another thing as well I forgot to mention uh, about these garages as well, because I've been doing this for the last last year almost now. I've been clean, every time I go to joint off, I just nip around the back of the wall and scrape the gobbo off the floor with my trowel. Uh, it only takes about two or three minutes, and I do that periodically throughout the five, about five times I go around to joint up. And I'm not kidding you, it saves your bags of time cleaning up at end. Uh, I've been doing that ever for the last, for, yeah, for the last year on these garages, just cleaning up every four or five course, scraping the gobbo off the back of the, you know, back side of the garage, off the concrete floor, rubbing it over onto the, uh, onto the stone where, I'm, where you know where I'm walking. Obviously, it just gets trampled into normal dust, and it makes a massive difference speeding your scent up at the end of the day. You get to the end of a garage, and you just take a little sweeping brush. You got a bit of dust on the floor, and that's it. it. Takes about five minutes to clean a garage after you've, uh, after you've, if you do that all the way up. Because I used to be a culprit of scraping it. Scraping off the first course of brick, the back side of the wall, and then just scraping it into a pile. And at the end of a garage, you had like a good 15, 20 minute, or sometimes half an hour cleaning set session, especially if it was in winter and you got the slop effect all over the wall. It would go, you know, it starts screeding it's then all over the wall, all over the fucking concrete floor, and up the first couple of courses of your back of your garage, it's, you know, it's just a fucking nightmare. So, uh, and doing that, cleaning up as I go, uh, makes a massive difference. And then here we are on this particular garage as a like a an English bond effect banding course, so a full course of headers uh, projected, and then of course a stretcher back to you know not projected, and then and then of course Vedder again projected over that. So uh, to be honest, this bonding course isn't too bad. Uh, coming from Red Row, they have a double they have a double bonding course on the houses, um, and it, they both project about seven and a half to ten mil each so you get double pre double projections a little bit fucking awkward but these single projections and then back to normal uh aren't too bad obviously you have it we had all the headers already snapped we got you know pre pre-cut packs of uh half bricks for these reds which were nice uh and they're easy enough to do especially when i'm using pick and dip style to do i'm just dragging dragging the brick along the bed and making the joint um using pick and dip to be honest exclusively now i've even trying to start using it a little bit when i'm building corners um especially if i'm using like a profile setup uh where there's like you know i'm gonna set profile up at each side and then i'll sort of tail out a corner to the profile just using uh just using the lines and i'll just build a corner using the lines sometimes uh, especially in hot weather it helps massively so especially if i'm working on my own uh, well I've, I've not done it working on my own but working with my dad i'll just set two profiles up i'll tail a big corner out one side just using you know use it line and then i'll use level to tail the side out and especially when it's hot weather we'll just join the corner up as we go and we'll do the same again build other corner up and then there we are you've got two corners i know you've used profiles to build them but sometimes it's not about using the profiles just to run in with uh, it's sometimes about you know managing your jointing and uh you know basically mitigating the time you're fucking you're laying bricks because a lot of the time if you leave your jointing too long it takes you fucking ages to join up and then you're not at that, that time you've lost trying to fucking bust through the dry jointings fucking you could have been laying so uh, it just makes it easier build as well you know i mean the build tends to go smoother i find when you've got 
couple of corners up already jointed especially if you do it double side you know double double sided uh, jointing on, on like a single skin brick garage helps massively just getting them corners out of way it's a big bulk of work and then just fucking fly it in uh, so yeah I think we're coming towards the end of the clip now um, I'm just going to finish off laying these adders. Uh, I uh, currently got a pack of, I got 24 packs of gloves, about the same style as I'm using here. Latex rubber, covered, coated, you know, knitted glove. Uh, them sort of a winter style glove, but I find these are miles better than using them thin ones. Them thin ones, a uh, little bit of wetness on top of a pack of bricks, and they're basically your, your glove soaked. Doesn't really, uh, you know, have any resilience towards the, the water, so. Uh, with the thin gloves and these thick ones really protect your hands a lot of the time than thin ones you still end up getting blisters and your hands still keep tearing uh, especially with the effect of your gloves getting wet you know what I mean these these latex covered gloves you tend to not get your, the glove act the glove itself actually that wet so you know the skin underneath don't start fucking rubbing and wearing away as easy because if your skin's nice and dry under your glove it's not gonna you're not gonna damage your hand whereas if it's wet it's gonna wear away underneath that glove so that's one of the things that I've been uh, really uh, an advocate of recently is trying to basically find a decent glove to use. But these rub, these latex rubber ones, I'm averaging about three or four days of use uh, out of a pair of gloves. Uh, I think on the day, I think I did, I, the day I did 950 uh, on the boundary wall, I think that pair, I, I think I was using tape on my fingers on that day, but I don't, I think, I think you get averagely about 1,500 bricks laid out of a pair of gloves. Uh, obviously, the pair of gloves I mean in my right hand, because I'm a left-handed bricklayer, so I hold my trowel with my left hand, so that glove doesn't get any wear. Well, it doesn't wear as quick, should I say, but your right hand, uh, which is your, my brick hand, wears really quick. Obviously, if you're, you know, if you're a right-handed bricklayer, it'll be the opposite way around. Your left hand will get worn quicker. So I recommend having a mate or someone you know with the same type of glove if you don't if you're not buying sharing gloves fucking if they're left-handed and you're right take all their opposite side opposite side hands that don't get knackered up that's a good way to like you know preserve your gloves a bit longer but with the price of gloves now at like you know i got four i got 24 pairs for 14 quid of these exact style gloves you know like with the orange orange latex with the uh, knitted white style glove uh, i got them I got them for 14 quid for 24 pairs. That's basically like 55p a pair or something like that. So I'm going to give them a review in the next coming days. And uh, I find using the pick and dip style tends to wear the glove a little bit more than traditional because you're dragging the brick a bit more. you got a bit more contact with the brick on your hand for a bit of a longer period uh, instead of tapping and scraping. So anyway, guys, thanks a lot for watching. Blasting these halves in and I will... Uh, I'll see you in the next video, showing you a bit more of the uh, feature work and just showing you that, you know, it's possible to do feature work nice and neat and uh, and uh, in a quick fashion. So, thanks a lot, for, thanks a lot guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.